Thank you, um, Duncan Jelman, for the invitation for having this opportunity to share with all, all of you about the, my understanding of functional diversity of trip A1 channels, particularly focused on the role of a calcium. So trip A1 is a, a member of trip iron channel superfamily with a typical architecture of seven transmembrane domain <coughs> and a poor domain formed between fifth and sixth transmembrane domain. It, it is a key damage sensing iron channels responsible for detecting a variety of harmful signals from the environment and the internal bodies. So these iron channels have thus been involved in diverse medical conditions and diseases, such as pain, itch, inflammation, and airway diseases. The diversified function of triple A1 channels are tied to its activation by a range of uh, stimuli, including noxious coat, chemical and mechanical stimuli. The most notable is that trip A1 can be activated by a large number of chemical aglys containing over 100. So these chemical aglys belong to two main uh, categories, electrophilic and long electrophilic aglys. The electrophilic aglys, such as AITC from must oil, are reactive, and the open trip A1 through covalent modification of these cysteine residues on the end terminal of trip A1. And therefore, any chemicals able to react with these cysteine residues could open the channels. <coughs> However, a long electrophilic ag aglys, such as carbacol from um, oregano plants, um, open trip A1 through direct binding to the channels. So these mechanisms partially explain the diversified function of this iron channel. Another very important mechanism that underlines diversified function of a channel is calcium. Trip A1 opposes the calcium permeable iron channel. Activation of trip A1, for example, by chemical aglys can cause increased intracellular calcium. Interestingly, calcium can then feed back to auto-regulate channels, with the low calcium promoting the ac activation of the channel, and high calcium uh, promoting inactivation of the channel. Increased intracellular calcium can also arise from calcium release from the ER store due to either activation of PLC-coupled G-protein-coupled receptor, for example, by inflammatory agents, bradycanin and histamine or due to <coughs> indirect effects of calcium. Calcium dependent activation of this channel, therefore, uh, has been proposed as a very important mechanism that enables this channel to sense or detect inflammatory agents and the cold stimuli. In addition, calcium has a dramatic effect on uh, triple A1 responses evoked by mechanical stimu stimuli, but it's not known whether this uh, trip A1 mediated a mechanical response or mediated by a calcium uh, changes. So collectively, calcium dependent regulation of this iron channel is a fundamental mechanism that diversifies function of trip A1 channels. But it remains unknown how calcium uh, works on these channels. To understand the modulation of trip A1 channels by calcium, we use uh, a recorded trip A1 occurrence using a, a chemical aglys, a carbacol, which is a long electrophilic aglys. As you can see here, uh, carbacol elicited a progressively larger trip A1 current in the absence of calcium. However, when you include two millimolar calcium, trip A1 currents will significantly enhance the higher doses, such as five to 700 micromolar, that cause a much smaller current. Apparently, it's due to a desensitization of the channels. So the analysis of this dose response curve from this experiment shows that clearly a calcium uh, robustly enhanced basal sensitiv sen uh, sensitivity of the channel. As you can see more clearly, a marked a left shift of the curve. To monitor a uh, uh, trip A1 activation by calcium in real time, we first 
activated a small trip A1 current by the uh, uh, agonist carbuncle on the nominal zero calcium with then applied about 10 micromolar calcium shortly after uh, zero calcium. As you can see, applied calcium uh, rapidly potentiated uh, the current. Increasing in applied calcium to half micromolar uh, caused even stronger uh, potentiation. However, further increases in uh, calcium caused a productive, uh, progressive reduction uh, in potentiation. As you can see more clearly from the summary of this experiment. <coughs> so you may notice that at a higher calcium, such as one millimolar, triple A1 currents were rapidly desensitized. So this desensitization process uh, presumably can, can explain the re reduced potentiation <coughs> seen in higher calcium. So to monitor a desensitization more accurately, we use a saturating dose of AITC and uh, electrophilic triple A1 agonist to fully activate channels uh, at a two millimolar calcium. As you can see, AITC rapidly and uh, desensitized the channels. And the, this experiment, therefore, demonstrates that calcium can both promote uh, potentiation and desensitization of the channels with low calcium promoting the activation and high calcium uh, promoting the desensitization uh, of the channels. But the central question is how calcium works. Carmodulin I mean, is a well-known calcium sensing protein. It has been involved in regulating many iron channels, such as calcium iron channels. We then wonder whether carmodulin is a, 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 is a calcium sensing proteins that modulate trip A1 through binding to the channels. To test this hypothesis, we first uh, test whether the trip A1 binds to carmodulin using this carmodulin pull-down assay. As you can see from this plot, in the absence of calcium, carmodulin did not pull down trip A1. However, a significant amount of trip A1 was pulled down by carmodulin in the presence of calcium. As a positive control, Carmodin also pulled down trip V1, allows the trip channels has already been known to be regulated by a carmodulin. Carmodulin is a, a calcium a sensing, uh, oh, sorry, is a calcium, uh, has a four calcium uh, binding site, with each of these two calcium binding sites located at the N and C terminals of carmodulin respectively. You mutate in these four calcium binding sites, therefore can deprive the ability of carmodulin to sense calcium. We then use the wild type carmodulin and this mutated carmodulin to perform the Q-immunal precipitation experiment. Consistent with this carmodulin pull down assay, uh, trip A1 also binds to carmodulin. As you can see, that the Q precipitation of trip A1 with uh, wild type carmodulin. However, this binding was abolished by mutating the four calcium binding site. So this experiment demonstrates that carmodulin binds to trip V1, depending on the calcium binding to carmodulin. We next to trying to identify the carmodulin binding regions on trip V1. To this end, we construct two GST tag uh, uh, protein constructs containing uh, N terminal and C terminal of trip A1 respectively. We then purify these two proteins and are used for carmodulin pull down assay. As you can see here, carmodulin pulled down C terminal of trip A1, but did not pull down GST tag and uh, N terminal of trip A1. We then progressively truncated the C terminal of trip A1. And notably, deleting only 16 amino acid here completely abolish the binding of trip A1 uh, to carmodulin, as you can see from this board, while all other deletions have no effect. <coughs> to further validate these 16 amino acid is the real carmodulin binding regions, we synthesize a peptide with identical sequence with these regions, and then use for a similar pull down assay. As you can see here, Incorporating this peptide abolished the binding of carmodulin to trip B1, but a scrambled peptide had low effect. So this experiment together 
reveals this 16 amino acid in C terminal trip A1 as a commodity, uh, as a trip A1 a commodity binding regions. So this diagram shows the uh, identified commodity binding region here is located between trip domain and the coil coil domain. So these two domains has been known to be very critical for allosteric, allosteric gating, of, gating of the channels. So shortly after we identify this uh, commodity binding regions, uh, this trip A1 structure has been published by David Judy's group. And to our surprise, we found that these commodity binding regions shown in pink here corresponds precisely to a bit strand, a bit sheet domain, but with unknown functions. And more interestingly, we found that this identified commodity binding domain was freely exposed to the periphery of this overall trip A1 structure. And therefore, uh, making, uh, a feasible, uh, making the possible that it can interact with uh, uh, partner proteins such as commodity. So this structure analysis also strongly supports the possible role of this identified commodity binding regions in modulating the trip A1 channel. To understand the relax uh, investigate the modulation, uh, the role of commodity in the modulation of trip one by Carlson. So these are the dose response curve um, plotting the trip one inward currents evoked at the nominal zero Carlson as a function of an agonist topical concentration. As you can see here, over expression commodity uh, markedly enhance the basal sensitivity of trip one channel. As you can see, a marked negative sheet of the curve to the left. And this enhanced basal sensitivity of the trip A1 channel, however, was abolished by mutating commodity binding side 1234. We then performed a similar experiment at a higher two minimal uh, calcium. As you can see here, um, over expression commodity, and uh, in this case, inhibited the sensitivity of the channel as you can see, a marked right shift of the curve. And again, this inhibitory effect of carmodulin was abolished by carmodulin mutants. So this experiment demonstrates that carmodulin can promote trip A1 activation at a low calcium, but inhibiting our channel at a high calcium, consistent with a dual role of calcium in modulating trip A1 channels. We then to examine whether carmodulin is critical for calcium-dependent potentiation of trip A1 channels. So similar here, we uh, applied calcium shortly after I evoke a small trip A1 current on the long zero calcium. As you can see here, applied calcium rapidly potentiate current. However, this potentiation was dramatically enhanced after overexpression carmodulin. So this summary of the experiment shows that enhanced potentiation of trip A1 by carmodulin was abolished by mutating four calcium binding side from carmodulin. We next assess whether carmodulin also is critical for calcium dependent desensitization of trip A1. In this case, we found a desensitization of trip A1 evoked by this AITC agonist was dramatically enhanced after overexpression carmodulin. As you can see, this uh, accelerated desensitization rate of trip A1 channels. And this enhanced desensitization caused by overexpression carmodulin was abolished again by calcium laken carmodulin mutants. So this experiment together demonstrates that indeed carmodulin is critical for both calcium dependent potentiation and desensitization of trip A1 channels. To further validate whether carmodulin is essential for calcium dependent potentiation and desensitization of trip A1 channel, we designed a protein construct by coupling this identified carmodulin binding domain to a, a an interleukin-2 receptor, which is also known as TARC, a single transmembrane domain. We then 
These helium protein contracts therefore can bind to endogenous carmodulin and therefore can sequester this carmodulin away from trip A1 channels. We then use these protein contracts to examine their effect on calcium dependent potentiation of trip A1 channels. As you can see here, in wild type, uh, uh, talk has no effect on this potentiation of trip A1 currents evoked by calcium. However, KO expression of this TAC furin protein contrast markedly uh, prevented the potentiation of trip A1 channels. Uh, and this summary of experiment also showing that this potentiation of trip A1 channels was similarly uh, blocked by carmodulin <coughs> and catalyst W7. So this experiment demonstrates that indeed carmodulin is a very essential for calcium dependent potentiation of the channels. So we next use the same approach to assess whether carmodulin is also crit uh, critical for desensitization. Compared to the wild type trip A1, as you can see from black traces, kill expression of this talk uh, fusion constructs to sequester uh, endogenous carmodulin and markedly reduce the desensitization rate of trip A1 channel. And this desensitization was, was also similarly uh, prevented by carmodulin and catalyst W7, and even stronger by barren ions, which is known to bind to carmodulin with much lower affinity. So this is a summary of this experiment. And together, this experiment again demonstrates that carmodulin is also essential for calcium dependent uh, desensitization of the channels. So to further identify functions, functional size within this identified carmodulin binding regions uh, uh, mediating either potentiation or desensitization, we mutated all these 16 amino acids individually to lactive charge uh, glutamic acid to rapidly uh, disrupt the binding between a uh, A1 and a uh, carmodulin. Here is a, a, a result uh, from wild type trip A1, the top panel shows the potentiation of trip A1 evoked by uh, calcium. The bottom panel showing the desensitization uh, caused by AITC. So mutating W996 here and uh, uh, P100, these two sides abolish both potentiation, as you can see here, and also uh, significantly uh, reduce the desensitization of trip A1 channel. Mutating V1008, this uh, size reduced potentiation, but uh, also uh, reduced desensitization. Mutating these tribal line R residues almost abrogated the uh, potentiation, however, had low effect on desensitization. And more interestingly, interestingly this desensitization uh, observed from these three mutants uh, here was was rescued by elder expression uh, carmodulin, as you can see from these pink traces, and therefore these results showing that the reduced or impaired desensitization in these uh, cells are due to diminished carmodulin binding and is not intrinsic to these uh, mutants. Therefore, this experiment further demonstrates that carmodulin depends on the regulation of trip A1. It employ a distinct but overlapping set of cells on trip A1 channels. So altogether, our results demonstrate that trip A1 carmodulin uh, is actually a calcium sensor that enables the trip A1 to sense and respond to different levels of calcium uh, distinctly, and therefore imparting functional diversity of this function to, uh, to the channels. So this is just a summary of all these 16 amino acid mutants, which I've shown in earlier slides. So based on our results, we propose uh, models for explain calcium-dependent regulation of trip A1 channels. So activation of TLC coupled G protein coupled receptor causing a rise of intracellular calcium due to uh, release of calcium from the ER star. Calcium increase can also 
uh, caused by extracellular calcium influx increase this intracellular calcium can then bind to calmodulin. Calcium loaded calmodulin and then can bind to uh, a calmodulin binding domain in the C terminal of trip V1, resulting a conformational change in the channels and therefore uh, result in either potentiation or inactivation of the channel. But how is single calmodulin binding domain mediating these two opposing effects is a future interesting question uh, 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 for our future studies. Uh, thank you for uh, uh, Last, I have to uh, acknowledge this work was uh, assisted by my previous PhD student, Dr. Uh, Hassan, and also collaborating with uh, uh, a professor, John Jago, in the US, and has been funded by MRC and the Royal Society. Thank you for your attention. So if you block, uh, for example, that carbon binding domain, they either abolish the channel function or they abolish the desensitization. Potentially, in the future, it might be very interesting using way our design paper uh, as an alternative approach to uh, modeling our channel function in the way of what I have known, I think probably that we still have a long uh, journey to, towards that end. But you believe that concentration could go for up until two millimolar free calcium? In the in vivo? Yeah, in the zone. Yeah, physiologically, I don't think you can have a two minimum probably um, called micro <coughs> But after activation of uh, the channel, you can reach a minimum range. So basically, there's a range of different calcium. They have a combination, either certain uh, activation or desensitization. So it's a very complex effect. Do you think the inactivation could be coming through the, the calcium coming through the channel itself? So you you open the channel by elevating cytosolic calcium, but it inactivates by calcium coming through the pore because you would have a higher concentration of calcium then. Yeah, and um, this calcium can either from intracellular uh, ER store and also can be due to uh, uh, calcium entry following initial channel activation. So that's both uh, process can cause this activation process with depend on whether the, the calcium level is high enough or um, is high or low. Uh, 